everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint. In this video, I just want to go through a few of the steps that I personally take and would recommend you guys also take when sort of preparing a miniature before you get to painting all the things to do before. So just showing you the miniature here. This is Finn Arton from Zombie Side. And if we look closely, and I'm sure it's a familiar sight to all of you, there's plenty of mold lines. So they're sort of all over this guy. There's some bad ones on his arm. His axe isn't particularly clean cut and sharp. There's some on his calves there, and uh, and he's got this big gap on the back of his head where his neck, his head's really not quite attached to his neck in the way that I would like to. And then his axe, using my fingers as a as a right angle here, but you can see that just ain't straight. That's not quite right. And you've seen me cover that in a previous video on fixing bendy miniatures. But this is a this is the full whack. This is everything I do. So the first thing I'm going to do is tidy up those mold lines. This is a seam scraper that I picked up from somewhere i will leave a link in the description below if i can find it again but i've struggled to find this else any, anywhere else since you know um a, a craft knife an exacto knife that sort of thing a, a scalpel is going to get a similar effect just this this is quite good for not particularly in this exact bit here that i'm reaching into but it has got a very very sharp point so it is allowing me to scrape off some of that but this is normally really good for a, a large area where you can just really scrape it down the seam and it just cleans it all off really really easily but yeah if you've only got access to an exacto knife craft knife that's going to do fine you just want to go around the round the miniature and scrape off every single one you can find try and really get that back down to the shape it should have been originally had it been perfectly molded and sent you in you know absolute perfect condition but this is probably probably the single most time consuming part and to some extent you'll see in my videos i don't always do this it just depends how much the miniature is going to get sort of picked up and looked at really closely for, for myself i play these games I'm, I'm a gamer so i'm normally aiming for sort of tabletop quality over you know competition standard but i know finn Arten is a really good example of a miniature people are going to be and he's huge right people are going to be picking him up and looking at him but because of his sheer size these mold lines are bigger and more noticeable than other miniatures would be but if you if you really, really want to get a good finish, I'd recommend doing this. On Horde, you'll see that I, I skip it. You know, nobody's really looking that closely at 20 of the same miniatures on the table, and it's not worth the five, 10 minutes per miniature this could this could add. Obviously, a single piece like this, what's five, 10 minutes plus the hours it's going to take to paint, but five, 10 minutes per miniature when there's 20 in the hoard, it does add up. So that's that's my excuse for not always doing it. Once you've fixed all of those, you are gonna run Fin Arten or whichever miniature you do in a little bath. So in the sink, I'm gonna use some bubble bath. This is just Tesco's own brand washing up liquid, but I'd throw in a little bit of washing up liquid and this is gonna remove any residue left from the molding process. I'm gonna use an old toothbrush here and just work it into the recesses and just make sure it's nice and clean, sparkly clean. You don't wanna work with a stinky, stinky miniature. No, seriously, the paint just isn't gonna stick quite as well if there is any residue, any of the, the stuff they use to remove the miniature from the mold afterwards. It's designed to you know, help the miniature slip out, so it's gonna not help your paint stick. Give him a rinse afterwards, just get any of those the soapy bubbles off and then leave him to dry for a bit just to make sure he's sort of thoroughly dry unless you're doing the next step which is going to be fixing his axe in which case he doesn't need to be dry yet but at that point if you've got no bends to fix don't worry about it boil the kettle stick some boiling water in a cup i've showed this previously i'll leave a link to that video if you want to just see how to do this bit make it dip his uh Dip his axe handle in the boiling water, makes it nice and floppy. And then I'm going to pull and hold it straight. Some ice cooled water would make that set much, much faster. I had to hold that for quite a while. Plastic does retain the heat and keeps floppy. So I will leave a link to the uh, video where I do that much, much better, better example. Hot water, then cold water. Next, we're going to address those big gaps on the back of his head and his neck. And then he's got one on his arm as well, where his arm is being glued to his shoulder. I'm going to be using some liquid green stuff. This is by Citadel, and it's just the one that I had at, at, at hand when I was doing this, this job. I've got a cheap brush because I don't want to ruin any of my nice brushes. And I've got this sort of little craft sculpting tool that was made by Johnny085, 3D printed, very, very nice with a little channel logo on. I'm going to scoop out a bit of this green stuff, get that on a, a palette of sorts, my Pringle lid specialty. And then I'm going to add in a few drops of water and just make that a bit more moist because it was so dry. That was that was a 
impossible to work with. Not actually getting on that well with Citadel's liquid green stuff and I have switched over to Army Painter's green stuff where you make it up yourself at the time and when you mix the two together they start to dry so I'm finding that better than this but I didn't have it at the time so I would recommend trying Army Painter's green stuff and it's a similar to this you just mix it yourself beforehand. I'm going to use a sculpting tool just to work it into that gap on his neck. I'm pushing it into the gap in this case because it's big enough that I can get some inside and then I'm smoothing it and filling it. It's just like plastering a wall. You guys have all plastered walls, right? You're just uh, filling that crack and smoothing it over. We will use the brush in a minute just to get a really smooth finish and you'll you'll see that work. But for now, I'm just applying it roughly, making sure the, the joint is completely filled so we can get a nice smooth line with no hole where his head is. And as, as I mentioned, yeah, Army Painters green stuff is what I'm using now. Take a bit of the blue, take a bit of the yellow, mix it together and I make little sort of Play-Doh snakes and I would then basically by hand roll that into his neck joint and that's going to harden by mixing the two together as and when I want it. And I just think it's a lot easier to work with than this liquid green stuff, which is basically dry as a bone and I always have to put water in to get it going, which where's the liquid bit? It doesn't make any sense. And all it's really saving you is that it's mixed together to begin with. So I'm also doing the same technique on that joint between his, his sort of elbow-ish and his shoulder shoulder joints. So I'm just roughly working this in and I've got a lot of time to play with. This does take a while to dry, so not, not too big a rush. And I'm going to wetten it down in a minute once we get the brush involved. So I've got a nice, damp, cheap brush here and I've applied some more water to it. And we're just going to really, really smooth this over. And as soon as the water starts hitting it, it becomes quite thin, quite pl playable, palable, blah, 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 blah. You, you, know, you know what I mean, guys. I'm able to move it around a little bit and I'm able to blend the, 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 the thick parts that I need in the neck joint, smooth that over in the rest of him. So it basically becomes a thin green paint as I move away from the bulk of where I need the liquid green stuff. So you can see it t tinting his head as well, but really it's just, just similar to when you're painting and you're mixing the colors together. I'm just trying to blend the, the liquid green stuff in so he doesn't suddenly have this big mess of a neck instead of a hole of a neck, but take your time, get that nice and smooth. And it might take a couple of coats, especially this liquid green stuff. I'm not finding it so much with the Army Painters version, but this, when it dries, I guess because you've got so much water in it now, that once it dries, it does sort of um, contract. It goes, you know, it shrinks and it might open up the gap a little bit. So two to three coats of this normally does the job for me. It is nice and easy to work with. You don't have to mix anything, but for what it saves, you know, just having to do two coats costs you in time, in my opinion. And this is how he looks once you've filled those. So he's looking a little bit green, but nice and smooth, no big gaps anymore, nothing nothing on, uh, on to, toward there. And uh, yeah, looks nice. And that will soon disappear once we start applying some paint, which, you know, let's get to that next and let's add a primer. So you're going to need a primer because that's going to let you stick the paint to the miniature. The primer is going to set your base sort of color coat and you're going to be able to work from there and this is going to adhere to the model nicely. I'm going to be using Army Painters Color Primer Barbarian Flesh. You're going to need to give this a massive shake, a couple of minutes, a good couple of minutes and then we're going to spray side to side. Now you want to always start with your primer off the miniature just in case it splutters at all so you get that paint spluttering in the background on that card instead of on your miniature. And the reason I'm using Barbarian Flesh here is because the miniature is going to be mostly flesh so by using this color primer saving myself painting all of that flesh and I think that's a huge benefit as most of you will have heard in the past if you've been watching the channel I use a lot of the color primers so once that's done turn the can upside down and spray until the the spray becomes clear and no more paint comes out that's going to clear your nozzle and stop the can from sort of drying and sealing up that's it guys that is Fenarton completely prepped and ready to go if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below and I will fire you back an answer. And then finally, thank you ever so much to all the Patreons that are massively supporting the channel. This month, there is a special offer on if you're on Patreon or you sign up in the next month to the executive producer or higher level, you will get a limited edition Watch It, Paint It brush beam sent to you completely free. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll catch you again next week.